on the way down screaming Whoa! So, just before this video starts, guys, I want to let you know that there are only four rounds left of this season before we go on to FPL 2016 with Nye's release uh, this coming Friday. There are five points to myself and Nico Rosso. These final four rounds are going to be absolutely crucial, so make sure you stick around to watch all those. But I'll let you get on with the video. I'll chat to you later, guys. F1 fans, it's Friday morning here in Belgium, and hopefully we'll be seeing some on-track action soon as the teams prepare for today's practice session. Spa is such a wonderful track and it's a circuit that the drivers love to race on. But it's also quite challenging, so we should expect to see a number of cars struggle to get up to speed here today. Yes, there are many aspects to Spa that keep the drivers and teams thinking. Unpredictable weather, long straights and fast corners, as well as the rise in elevation up to Eau Rouge. All these make Spa one of the prized locations in the Formula 1 calendar. What kind of setup will drivers be looking for around here? It's got a fair mixture of demanding corners. Is it all about finding the sweet spot in handling balance? It's easy to make your car quick in a straight line, you just take all the downforce off. But when it comes to a track like this, you really need a bit more of a compromise. The main focus here is carrying speed through the fast flowing corners, but you still don't want to be a sitting duck on the straight. What's going on guys, my name is George Oliver Wolfie and welcome back to another F1 2015 Career Mode episode. This is round 11 out of 14, the Belgian Grand Prix around the magnificent spa frank circuit, uh, circuit. And I don't know how this weekend's going to go, being honest, I was just checking the weather forecast here because it looked like it could rain when we were going through the intro there. It did look like there were a few black clouds, but by the looks of it, it should say dry for the whole practice session, which is good. We're going to go through the setup now. But like I said, I'm not really sure how this weekend is going to go because Belgium has never been a particularly strong uh, track for the Williams team. But then there have been a few circuits that haven't been particularly strong for us, but we've performed quite well. So we'll just have to see how we go around Spa and hopefully we'll be able to get a nice load of points. Our main objective is to gain points on Nico Rosberg or if we lose points, not to lose too many. So. That's our main objective for this weekend, but anyway, we have loaded up the setups and we are not going to go out on track and just get some laps in and see what our pace is like around this circuit. Oh, no, don't touch that. Hmm, I don't think there's any problem with damage. Holy shit, that was almost that far. Let's have a look at that. It's that sort of embarrassing moment on replay car. So we're just coming through turns 13 and 14. We just get too heavy on the curb, actually. That's all we did. Just lost the rear end by going too heavily on the curb. If we watch on board now from Pastor Maldonado's point of view, you can see just lose the rear end by going on the curb too much and the car completely unstable. And then we obviously come back into the pits and we've not set, uh, we have set a lot of time, sorry, but we. We did reset a really representative time. You can see at the top right corner it says our best lap time is 2 minutes and 5 seconds. So not that good, but I'm just speeding up this part because it always takes ages to get back into the garage. And now I'm going to alter the setup a little bit here because I've been thinking that the car doesn't really turn through this circuit as much as I wanted to. So I'm going to just change up the suspension a bit, maybe change up the balance of the car and hopefully it'll help to ease the setup a little bit but as far as the weird circuit I mean I don't usually yeah sort out setups that much uh, during a uh, recording I normally do that prior to actually making the video but this time the cell that I decided on at the start just wasn't working whatsoever so I decided to change up a bit do a bit of testing which you're going to see a bit of fed up footage in about 10 seconds or so, which I'll just let you guys enjoy that, where I literally just did went out, did some laps, came back into the pits, adjusted the setup, went back out, see what it's like, but I'm going to let you guys enjoy this part of the video, and yeah, just see what I get up to normally in practice, so I'll let you guys enjoy it, and I'll catch you in a minute.
It's Nico Rosberg who's been fastest today, but it's only practice. He'll be wanting to repeat that pace tomorrow when it comes to qualifying. So there we have it guys, that is the end of the practice session. Hopefully you enjoyed that sort of sped up version of practice. I'll probably introduce that a bit more in videos in the future, just so you can see still why I get up to a bit more sped up. At the end of practice, we finish with P6, Nico Rosberg is fastest, which isn't that good. We're a whole a second and a half off the pace there. Bottas finished fourth fastest, which is pretty good, but the Ferrari do a very interesting practice running primes. And now we're going to go into qualifying and we'll see how that goes. Where the cars will shortly be going out on track and trying to set the fastest lap time on the wonderful Spa circuit. Spa is always a difficult track to predict who will do well at, but after the last few years, it's been a mix of Red Bull, McLaren, and Ferrari drivers that have excelled. Well, Ferrari have had 16 wins here over the years, but today I'd probably give the advantage to Red Bull. They're always able to pull off something special here. So we're jumping straight into our flying lap in qualifying and we're just going to be a slipstream off of else fully playing Nazar there in the Sauber. So hopefully that will help towards our lap, our eventual lap time. We cross the line and we actually go purple there with a 148.0. And I thought that was a very fast lap time actually. And at the end of the session, we cut straight to the end and we did manage to improve on that lap time in the two other laps that we set. So we actually go and get pole position at the end of that session after getting slipstream from the Sauber so it looks like that just helped us get pole position lads and um, we start on pole. Fan favourite Felipe Massa has certainly delivered a wonderful performance out there in qualifying. He's got the fastest lap and is now on pole for tomorrow's race. Well they've shown the car has great pace today but they'll need to demonstrate what it can do over the race duration if they are to secure the victory tomorrow. So there we have it guys, that is the end of qualifying, nothing much happened in that session, I only set three laps and our first one was enough to get pole position by two tenths of a second from Kimi Raikkonen. Nico Rosberg gets third place in terms of lap times, but you can see flashing up there, he has a five place grid penalty, so I actually start down in eighth place and Nico Hulkenberg also has a five place penalty. So I'm not sure what's happened now, I'm actually going to look on the incident here just to see what these penalties are for. But Valtteri Bottas will now start in third position, which is very, very key for us because that'll help really towards constructors and also help me and the drivers as Rosberg slips back. You can see here the penalties. Uh, Perez got a grip penalty of five places to so illegal blocking. Rosberg collided with Perez, which uh, gave him his grip penalty. And Nico Hulkenberg also did illegal blocking. So whether the Force Indians were running together on their lap time blow for block Rosberg, I'm not sure. But... This could be key towards our race, so let's just see how we can do and if Rosberg can climb through the field. It's Sunday and that means it's race time here in Spa. As the cars are being prepared, let's join them trackside for the start of the Belgian Grand Prix. Sitting proudly in P1 for the start of today's race is the ever likeable Felipe Massa. He's incredibly proud of his starting position, but he's experienced enough to know he's got to take advantage and see it home in the race. He wants to end this weekend on a high after yesterday's fantastic performance, but he's going to have a lot of competition. I doubt he'll be expecting an easy race, especially considering the teams around him. It was a slightly surprising move to see Daniel Kvyat promoted to the senior team after just a single season at Toro Rosso. The spotlight was always going to be on him this season. How do you think he's done? There is extra pressure that comes along with being in the spotlight of the senior team. Ricardo reacted excellently to it last year, but Daniel hasn't managed that same sort of start and is struggling to come to terms with the car this year. So here we are on the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix, starting from pole position with Kimi Raikkonen in second. Our strategy, you can see there, is going to be a two-stop race. And we'll just see how that goes. We're going to end the race with the prime tyres and hopefully our work as well. So as we wait for five red lights, a good start will be key here, heading into turn one at the source. And the lights are out and we seem to have got a very good start over Kimi Raikkonen there. He seems to have gone away shockingly. Bottas moves on to P2, but Raikkonen and him just swapping pit positions constantly through turn one at the source. We make that and now we head on the run down towards Eau Rouge, the stunning left, right, left corner here. Up this hill, through there, flat out. It's such a great corner if you can get that right. And then on to the DRS straight down the Kevel straight, down towards turn seven and eight at Lake Paul. But a pretty good start for us there. We lead already by eight tenths of a second over Kimi Raikkonen and Valtteri Bottas who are battling away second and third. We'll be interesting to see where Nico Rosberg is at the end of the first few laps. But here we're coming through now to 
towards the end of lap one, flew but uh, the really, really fast flat out left hand of Juan Shimon towards the bus stop she came to end the first lap. And so far, we're leading by a nice margin at the moment. We've got uh, almost a second lead, I'd say, over the cars behind us. We'll see how far the gap is as we set the inevitable fastest lap. And the gap is two and a half seconds already after the first lap, so absolutely incredible. Bottas doing a great job of holding up Raikkonen and for me, and now let's just try and build this advantage which we now put us later on lap 2, coming through turns 13 and 14 where we had our little moment in practice earlier on in the video, but we are still having a nice lead, you can see now coming on to lap 3, we set another fastest lap, the gap is now 2.9 seconds, so really extending this lead as we... Uh, as we muck up the first corner there, so that will compromise our run a bit down to Eau Rouge and then up to the Kemmel Straight, so that could probably not put us under pressure, it wasn't that big of a mistake and we still have a lot of speed going through Eau Rouge, but it could have hampered our run, but it doesn't thankfully, but now coming on to lap 4, the gap is only 1.5 seconds, we've lost a whole, pretty much 1.5 seconds on that lap, so we decide to hit this lap and we're going to come in and fit on final set of option tyres I'd say. So now it could be the bush stop chicane. We go into the pit lane here, pitting for the lead of the race. Valtteri Bottas resumes first position and we'll see who comes in behind us. It seems like Sebastian Vettel is going to stay out. The Mercedes crews are out so it'll be interesting to see who comes in. Then Red Bull are also out in the pit lane and that's a Ferrari. I think that's Kimi Raikkonen who's coming in. Slightly held us up there which isn't ideal but hopefully this undercut will still work on the rest of the fast cars at the front of the grid and hopefully we'll be able to still rejoin in the lead of the race. So we'll be interested to see where we come out of the pits here. Mark Ericsson there and we are going to rejoin right between him and Jensen Button. So in a bit of a battle. Would have been a bit better if we rejoined ahead of Ericsson to be honest but in saying that we will get slipstream of him going down our rouge which will help us with straight line speed as the edges of on some grass there almost off the track but we have DRS thankfully no uh, no contact was made between us there but we use the DRS and now we get back up into P12 with Fernando Alonso just ahead of us now and we cut later on to lap 5 and we've caught to the back of Fernando Alonso we're going to look to go up his inside going towards turn 15 maybe but he's defending the inside line very well there so going through turn 15 we're going to go round the outside here uh, and a brilliant move we made there now through turn 16 can we hang it around the outside yes we can we make the move perfectly there and up into P11. Look who's in P10, past the Maldonado. That could be dangerous as we now look a uh, replay on board with Fernando Alonso. It just, but there's enough room really for us to squeeze on the outside and we make that move stick. Now moves us into P11 as Maldonado and the staff in there pull into the pit lane. So we're going to move on some more places as Felipe Nazo is also in the pits. So we're up so far to P5, P4, going into Turn 1 at last source. And in front of us is Sergio Perez, so we'll look to try and catch up to the back of him. Bottas is P5, so he's running all right. I actually know he's been swapped by Fernando Alonso now, which is pretty crucial for us. So if Alonso can hold up Bottas, that might allow us to get a bit more of a gap up. But for now, it's a mission to catch up Perez, and we do that at the end of lap 6. We've cut right to the back of him, but I think he's going to put into the pits here, so we move to the outside. Which turns to the insides there, and yes, he's going to pull into the pits with Roman Grosjean. You saw him go straight on into the pit lane in our mirrors there, but so far we're up to PT. Carlos Sainz is leading the race. He's gone very deep in his first stint there. I think he'll be on the prime tyres, but for now we've caught to the back of him at the end of lap 7, and he's pulling into the pits anyway. If we have a careful look at his tyres, I think he was actually on the options there. So he's managed his first stint perfectly, and that might have just brought him up a few positions. But for now, I'm in P1, Bottas 1.3 seconds behind us, and loads of people set past his laps on their new sets of option tyres. Rosberg 1.49.1 there, so a very fast lap time uh, by him, at least a second quicker than our last lap, so he's caught up a lot there. But for now, we're in P1, Bottas P2, Raikkonen P3, now it's time to build a gap as we go to lap 9 going down the camel straight and we haven't been able to build a gap instead Valtteri Bottas has caught right up to the back of us here and now on lap 9 we're going to actually come into the pits end of this lap so our first two stints have actually only been uh, 4 laps on the, the first stint and 5 laps on the second one so not really we're going to have to probably do a 3 stop race instead of a 2 stop here and go 
up uh, spreads Houston on the prime ties to end the race here. But coming through turn 16 now on our way down to Blanchimont. And we have a massive train behind us. We have Valtteri Bottas, Sebastian Vettel, and we're riding on board with Kimi Baikin and his importance. Vettel and Bottas go side by side going through Blanchimont. And Vettel makes the move stick going up. Uh, Bottas is inside. But now coming into the pits at the end of the slab, we'll see who follows us in. It looks like it's just going to be us as we hit the wall there. Luckily, no damage. Oh well, yes, it looks like it's just going to be us coming in at the end of this lap. So I'm guessing this is going to be another one lap undercut that we make here as we make our pit stop. Hopefully we won't get held up here. Please, please. And no perfect pit stop by the Williams crew. 2.3 seconds. Absolutely perfect there. And it looks like we'll rejoin somewhere at the back end of the top 10, hopefully. Hopefully in front of Carlos Sainz. By the looks of it, there goes Daniel Ricciardo. We're down in P8. And yes, we come out just in front of Carlos Sainz. So we got a bit of excess fuel, so we're going to push on that. But now we come a bit later in that lap, and we've put to the back of Daniel Ricciardo, and we might make a move here, go through Poulon, and we absolutely nail that there. So right up his inside, through turn 12, and we're up into P7 as we cut to the end of lap 10. There are people in the pit lane, so our undercut seems to have worked pretty well here actually, as we move up straight up into P2 with Daniel Kvyat leading this race again, like he did in Hungary. That he is leading uh, for the second time, and he's still yet to make a pit stop there, so I doubt he's going to be able to hold on to this position for long. We might even get DRS on him going down this straight, but we'll have to wait and see. I uh, don't think we are, I think he's going to be just that bit too far ahead for us, and yeah, no DRS on him this time. But we cut later on the lap, and he did get a brilliant exit through Lake Com, so we put right to the back and go through the sweeping uh, right hander at turn 10. We go up his inside through turn 11, and it looks like we're going to make the a uh, brilliant move up his inside there as we watch it back on the replay. We just pull up his inside, he leaves us a room. We don't really squeeze him out either, very respectful between the two drivers there. And we're up back into the leader race and hopefully he'll hold up Sebastian Vettel as he comes to lap 13 now. And Vettel only just managed to get through, but then caught right to the back of us here. He's got DRS going down the Kemmel straight, going towards turn 7, 8 and 9. And he's going to still hang it round the outside. We touch, we make contact there. He squeezes us off wide, but we still hang on to P1. But we've hit the gravel a bit, which has slowed us down completely. Bell gets a good run going into the, you know, uh, the long swooping right hander at turn 10. And he's got first place, but we go go up his inside at turn level, just like we did on Daniel Kibiat. And we take back first place, but he's still there. Sebastian Bell really not giving up here. We are having such a good battle with him as we go through the sweeping left hander at turn 12, taking back the lead of the race. Now we come on to lap 15, and Vettel is back at us now. He is really fighting hard in this team. We decided to go for another option stint instead of going for Pines because we realised we could make this stint last until the end. So it has been a bit of a change of strategy, but luckily it seems to be working. We're Keeping the leaders with us, we have DRS here on Vettel, and we're going to go up his inside into turn seven. But we've hit the curb a bit hard there, and we're going to have to put off the corner there. We get a warning corner cutting as Jeff just speaks to us there. And we got a warning that even though that's actually the first time we put a corner, but now we put later on that lap, and Rosberg's managed to get past Sebastian Vettel as he cut through. We're at this massive long left hander and Rosso squeezes up from inside. We raise a hand in frustration there. He really shouldn't have gone for that dive, I don't think. There wasn't enough room for him to get through, particularly. But now he's up into P1. I don't think we're going to be able to keep up with him here whatsoever. But thankfully, Vettel has dropped off slightly. But we get a really poor run through turn 15 and turn 16. And Vettel is suddenly right back on the back uh, behind us. We go box this lap. Like we go coming for a set of prime tyres, which we go seven laps to the end of the race and hopefully this will allow us to keep up with Rosberg who I'm guessing is doing the exact same. We've got Sebastian Bell coming in right behind us as well. There's Nico Rosberg doing his pit stop. We come in, I think we've actually come in a lap later than what I've wanted particularly because we didn't get an undercut and we've been held as well in the pit lane by Kimi Raikkonen there which has allowed Sebastian Vettel to jump us in the pit stop so Ferrari timing that absolutely perfectly managing to get Sebastian Vettel out in front of us. It's a perfect pit stop from Ferrari, perfect strategy to bring Raikkonen in at the same time and the double stack seems to have worked perfectly for them. But for now we are out in P4. Yellow flags, what's going on here then? All back to green flags, back to yellow flags. 
and it's not Roman Grosjean goes like, oh, oh, Sebastian Vettel's just made contact there with Roman Grosjean, and that that is a bit different. I did not expect that. So we ride on board with Vettel. He goes to the left to try and avoid Grosjean. He's on the racing line, but they just make contact. Grosjean also turns left, and there's nowhere for Vettel to go, and he loses his front wing completely there. And now surely Vettel's going to have to make a pit stop, and that puts him out of the race completely. Well, now we're on to lap 17. Bottas makes his uh, third and final pit stop. Nico Rosberg, three seconds ahead of us. We're going to look to see if we can catch him. Uh, is this Nico Rosberg in front of us? I can't actually tell. No, it's Sergio Perez. So, lap 19, we've only just caught to the back of Sergio Perez. Nico Rosberg, 3.9 seconds ahead of us. Hopefully, Ericsson isn't going to get in our way here. He's run racing line. He needs to get out of the way there, and he does. But now it's a mission to chase down Rosberg as Perez completely backs out of the way there, which is perfect for us. But the Salva is right in our mirrors here. He's getting the press off us and Slipstream, but he's obviously not going to go for it. Rosberg, 3.9 seconds ahead, still we've got three laps to close this gap. And now we're catching up to the back of Roberto May, trying to use as much Slipstream from him as we can. But now on lap 22, we're right at the end of the race. The gap is only 1.2 seconds. We've really cooked to the back of Rosberg well here. And we're going to see if we're going to be able to catch up to him on this last lap. There is a fat marker ahead. I think that'll be one of the manners. So hopefully he'll get in his way. And you can see here, going through 10 to 10, Rosberg around the back of Will Stevens. Please be allowed, Will Stevens, and get in his way. And no, he backs out of it. Will Stevens is getting out of the way perfectly for Rosberg through 10 11. And that's really not helped us there. And surely, if, unless he makes a mistake, Rosberg will have wrapped up this race victory and will extend his point with his lead at the top of the standings by another seven points. And that's exactly what he is going to do. Rosberg takes the checkered flag, wins the race. We come over the line in second place. Good result for us. So, but say we start first and Rosberg down in eighth. That isn't brilliant, so especially when it extends Rosberg's lead at the top of the standings. But... Not a bad race on us. It's a podium. It's as close to the top as we're going to get without winning it. So I suppose we just have to take this result and move on to Italy, which is the next round. And um, yeah, let's just. It's annoying being honest. We were catching him. I think one more lap, maybe two, and we definitely would have got him. But it's a shame we couldn't get him there. But it's a good result. Second place, 18 top points. Not bad. Today. The German finished on the top step of the podium with a comprehensive performance. Sometimes a driver just feels comfortable in the car and is dialed into the track, making for an unbeatable combination. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. So that's second place, guys. Nico Rosberg comes from seven from the grid to take the checker fly by 2.4 seconds. He gets 25 points, we get 18, so he extends his lead by a further seven points at the top of the standings. Kimi Raikkonen gets third place with Valtteri Bottas in a great four. Lewis Hamilton only takes fifth place with Daniel Ricciardo, sixth, Vettel recovering to seventh after having to make an extra pit stop. Daniel Kibiak gets eighth place after a five second penalty. Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen round out the top 10 in Maldonado and Nazar finishing 11th and 12th. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you guys in the next round. She was thinking about the honey do If I only knew where she running to Maybe I'd have caught her, but I did it Ooh. Now I've been thick of reminiscing and drinking A little liquor to envision what we had last summer A summer's of the past Oh, now nah, sipping thick and this would always last See you in a few, but it never came to pass Cause a beauty like you, the only way I'm coming back Lord knows I've been waiting Waiting here patiently, waiting for the day you're back face to face. Pretty eyes, long nights got away from me. Uh, and I just wanna say something to you, girl. Hey, wait, I forgot your name. I ain't seen you in forever, babe. Damn, babe. I know the things have changed, but you're still looking better, babe. Oh, girl, you look so good. Under the moon, remember when we did that? Uh, yeah, whole side chilling ever after no. Wouldn't call your friends back. She would batter the most. Uh, a toast to you and your beauty. How did I forget about it at all? But oh shit, what a trip that you threw me for. Thought I'd see you right back in the fall. But I think I'll catch you sooner or later. Do you remember my flavor? Cause I've been waiting for a long time. To 
sauna or later Do you remember my flavor? But it's been a while now, darling I thought I'd catch you sooner or later Yes, I did Remember my flavor Remember Cause it's been a long, 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 long. And I said, hey, wait, wait It's been forever, baby baby I know the things have changed But you're still looking bad, baby Oh, still looking good Oh, yeah Oh, yeah I said, you look so good You look so good Yeah. Uh, remember, Marvel.